There seems to be one big difference between the defenders of The Last Jedi and the defenders of The Rise of Skywalker. While The Last Jedi defenders had many different reasons and arguments for why Last Jedi was a masterpiece, The Rise of Skywalker defenders only seem to have one thing to say, and it's wrong and it needs to stop. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Get a kick-ass website today. With Last Jedi, it was very clear who to blame or defend for the stupid decisions made in the story. Comment sections were full of many different arguments for why little Ryan Johnson was either a genius or a selfish egomaniac. I sit in option two. But with The Rise of Skywalker, there only seems to be one main defense as to why it turned out so bad. J.J. Abrams was in a no-win situation and he was trying his best to create a good story with what Ryan Johnson's Last Jedi had left him. This idea that J.J. tried his best to fix the the damage that Ryan Johnson had done to the franchise. Ugh. A lot of people feel it would have been near impossible for anyone to bring it all together in the final film. Not only did JJ have to write the final installment and tie up all the loose ends, he also had to rewrite episode 8 so the ending would make sense. I understand where these comments are coming from, as I share a common hate with all these people for The Last Jedi. Even re-watching these clips can't be easy on any of us about his mother. It's easy to see someone coming out of the theatre feeling this way, especially if you only saw it once, which makes me jealous. I had to sit through this shit show twice. And as one comment said, at least JJ dared to be sentimental, which is true. Being sentimental seems to be a crime in Hollywood these days. Every old hero has to become a loser or an asshole or both. So yep, Ryan the Punchable and The Last Jedi definitely got the ball rolling towards JJ's self-destruction. But to blame Ryan for the horrible car crash that is the rise of Skywalker just doesn't add up. Somehow Palpatine returned. Now I have to say, by no means is this a defense of The Last Jedi. That film can burn in hell along with Ryan. And while watching The Last Jedi feels like hell on earth, it didn't set up JJ to make a pile of shit. That pile of shit was created between JJ's ears. Race. Mm. Let's compare Ryan's destruction to JJ's supposed attempted reconstruction of this once loved franchise. We were in love. We had such good times. I thought they'd last forever. Let's compare these two directors and see who's to blame. Sadly, that means a Last Jedi recap. Okay, Snoke dead, Luke presumably dead, heroes on the run, villains angry, and on the chase, again. Oh, and sadly, we really lost Carrie. We loved you too, Carrie. I know Ryan's got nothing to do with Carrie's death. Well, I hope he hasn't. But I think we should all choose to remember her like this, rather than this. He's an asshole. <laughs> So Last Jedi finished with the bad guys still chasing the good guys in a massive universe that you would think would provide endless ideas. At this moment, they're all safe and traveling together. There's no immediate threat. We don't have the excitement of a captured hero. Will he get rescued? We don't have friends splitting up as their journeys lead them on different paths and wondering if they'll ever see each other again. The film ends and there's just no feeling of anticipation of what might happen. Unless, of course, you read Girlfriend magazine and you want to know if that hot abuser gets his girl. The villains seem to have been put in a weak position and the heroes got away. Besides Luke being killed off, which was madness and felt like a full on kick to the nuts, there is nothing of importance going on. We had a long boring chase that made no sense and we had the joy of seeing Luke Skywalker as a coward. The end. Ryan finished his story. Go crazy, JJ, do whatever you want. Somehow Palpatine returned. Yes, I did forget that JJ is the terrible cover band version of a scriptwriter, which leads to some terrible decisions. Even if his intention was to fix Ryan's fuck-ups, his choices of how to do that were idiotic, time-consuming, and just made everything worse. As with Snoke, it would have been smarter for JJ to just let Snoke go like he had to do with Phasma. This scene just feels like JJ wasn't happy with what happened to Snoke and tried to give it a quick fix with a stupid idea. JJ also strangely forgets that he was executive producer on The Last Jedi and that he loved telling everyone how great Ryan's script was. JJ knew what Ryan was going to do with The Last Jedi. It's not like he found out about all of Ryan's surprises the day shooting started on episode 9. He knew way before they finished making Last Jedi who was going to be alive or dead. It's one of the things Colin Trevorrow had a problem with when he was still in line to direct episode 9. 
basically, if JJ didn't want Ryan killing Snoke, or Luke for that matter, he could have stopped him. The problem is JJ doesn't care that much. His only focus is on the spectacle, not the story. He cranks out disposable entertainment, but what makes it frustrating is he does it with other people's creations. And if JJ just couldn't let Snoke go, he should have done something more interesting than just putting him into a jar. This bizarre trend that everyone in the Star Wars universe has to have some weird connection or be related. And if you want them to be connected, wouldn't it have made more sense for Snoke and Palpatine to have known each other for years? Snoke could have been the one to step into the Emperor's role just after the end of Return of the Jedi. He could have been the one responsible for saving Palpatine and keeping him alive. It would also explain Palpatine returning now because he could be avenging Snoke's death. JJ could have even given us some flashbacks Lord of the Rings style to show how Snoke came to be. Could have even shown us how he built up the First Order and that they didn't just appear. Or more importantly, it could show us how Snoke convinced Kylo to hate his parents so much because that one seems pretty important to the story. JJ's idea to make Snoke a clone fixes nothing from The Last Jedi, but it does bring up a shitload of questions. Is Palpatine still making more, or has he just kept all these ones for years? What is Palpatine doing with those Snokes? If Snoke's a clone, how does he have force powers? Because I'm pretty sure that's not how cloning works. How did Palpatine place Snoke in charge of the First Order, when Palpatine's been in hiding for 30 years? Did Snoke just turn up one day, wearing a gold dress, straight from Exegol, Icy Pole, whatever the fuck that planet's called? declaring himself the new Mac Daddy. Listen here, bitch. I've said it before, but bringing back the Emperor to replace Snoke, which killed George Lucas's original story, had zero to do with Ryan Johnson's story. Why would you bring back some old dead guy when you have Rose? JJ's the one that brought back the Emperor. He was thinking it would be an easy shortcut to win back the old fans. Emperor! I recognise the Emperor. Called it first. In a universe that seems to have a very rich history, can't we please have a new villain? The Emperor was cool, but he wasn't the first or only Sith. There were others, and maybe they were interesting. And you know, there's the small fact that George killed Palpatine. And that was sort of important. Star Wars, the fantasy universe with endless possibilities. And we have JJ cranking out his old VHS tapes to find us a new villain. Star Wars is almost gone. Buy it today or lose it forever. We all know Ryan's treatment of Luke Skywalker in Episode 8 is criminal. Not just his death, but the pathetic coward personality he gave him. JJ's attempt to fix this is again pitiful. And if he really wanted to, he could have had Luke alive. An old friend has learned the path to immortality. One who has returned from the netherworld of the Force. They established that he can project himself all around the universe. JJ could have just decided that Luke and the Last Jedi was a projection the whole time. It could have been why Luke left that map to the island, even though he didn't want to be found. Luke! It would also explain why he was standing out in the open in full Jedi robes when Rey arrived. It didn't look like that island had a reason to get dressed up. Go away! The first scene of him in this film that happens to be called The Rise of Skywalker could have been a close-up of him just opening his eyes in a Jedi temple on the other side of the universe. He could have been training new Jedi all this time. And now it's time to rise. See, it even fits with the name of the movie, which would be great. And if you think me saying bringing back Luke is stupid, it still beats bringing back this dude from the dead, giving him nursing staff, a cloning facility, and a fucking grandstand full of fans, all of which never gets explained. One scene could explain Luke not being dead. Three films in and we still don't understand how Palpatine survived. But JJ decided to keep Luke dead and just keep reminding us of terrible moments from Last Jedi with odd lines and awkward scenes that stand out like tits on a sexy sea sloth. A Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. This isn't fixing anything. This is just reminding me of The Last Jedi and I don't like that feeling. Master Skywalker. I will earn your brother's saber one day. If JJ wanted to fix Ryan's decisions, it would have been good to address them. Things like, did Luke really think it was the best idea to go hide on an island, be an asshole, and just ignore the millions of people that were dying? Does Rey have any regrets about hitting an old man in the back of the head just because she was horny from seeing her first man titties? Maybe Rey is getting a bit of action these days. She seems a lot happier. Him. Always. 
And because this is JJ, Luke back on the island again for the third fucking movie. It's hard to believe JJ had Luke Skywalker and he could do whatever he wanted with him for two films. And he decided to use him for 30 seconds in one film and then a whole two minutes and 45 seconds in the other. Hey, look, Ray is up at the 55 minute mark, twice that of the next character, more than the next two characters added together. Out of interest, let's just have a quick look. Oh, fuck me. You have to really fuck up to make Ryan Johnson look like the better option. But you do have to remember those 21 minutes and 15 seconds are fucking horrible. Ryan's treatment of Luke and killing him off the way he did was the biggest fuck you in cinema history. But it was JJ, not Ryan, who decided to give Luke only two and a half minutes of screen time in the final movie in a series that is about his family. And he uses that two and a half minutes so Luke can tell Ray how special she is and also to show him getting his ass kicked again quick break and don't go anywhere to thank today's sponsor Squarespace. Right now the world is a captive audience so it's time to shine and to do that you have to look your best and with Squarespace you can look better than your best. Running your business from home has some wonderful benefits. Looking your best isn't one of them. Be seen the way you want to be seen with a professionally designed website that won't cost you a fortune and it is easy to do. Choose from any of the professionally designed templates all of which can be customized. Add photo galleries, portfolios and my favorite video blocks. Look at all that great content. You can even have video backgrounds. Squarespace also has incredible marketing tools to heat up your social content. So be ready for all that extra attention you're about to receive. Everyone does something interesting. It's time to share it with the world. Go to Squarespace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch into the world, go to squarespace.com slash robot head and you will receive a full 10% off your first purchase. Show us what you've got. I'll give JJ one thing. Carrie got to move around a lot more in The Rise of Skywalker than she did in The Last Jedi, and she flew a lot less. I'm really not a fan of recreating dead people. I find it way too distracting. I spend too much time thinking, do they actually look real? And in Carrie's case, who was she originally saying those lines to? Personally, I would have been happy to start the film on Leia's funeral. It would have been a nice reason for everyone to be there, like Lando and the butthole, which coincidentally, Lando and the butthole is the name of my next album. I like to name all my photo albums, but even after Lucasfilm said they wouldn't bring Kerry back. JJ just couldn't resist going three for three and killing another OT character in the last film. Do me a personal favor, be optimistic. So he brought her back and I'm guessing, like the rest of the world, JJ thought that Leia flying through space was ridiculous and needed some explaining because up to the flying scene in The Last Jedi, there had been no hint of her having any Jedi training. JJ's great idea to explain the Mary Poppins scene was to show Luke training Leia and we got to see that she was pretty advanced. She even made her own lightsaber, which as you know, is the big Jedi training tick of approval. I mean, we have to be sensible, Leia was nowhere near Rey's level of power, who is, but good enough to beat Luke and to train Rain. Now this would have been a wonderful idea and I probably would have wanted to see more of Leia being with Luke if it didn't again make things worse, bring up more questions and make Leia look like an unbelievably selfish person who got people killed. Now let's be clear, I absolutely hated Ryan Johnson's version of Leia. It annoyed me as much as what he did to Luke. It made me feel that the people who chose Last Jedi to be their first Star Wars experience must have been super confused of why Leia was seen as an icon. You're demoted. But JJ thought he could fix that. The problem is JJ's ideas never go beyond, wouldn't it be cool, followed by high fives. Never considering the rest of the story. Luke. So JJ has established that Leia is a Force user and could probably beat Kylo, another Force user, in a duel. Add the small fact of her being his mum and you now have to think it might have been a good idea if she confronted Kylo herself and save, I don't know, thousands or maybe millions of lives. Maybe she could have done it before her husband and her brother both died. You also have to now think with all her powers that at this moment, instead of heading inside and sending everyone else out to die, she could have attempted to, I don't know, make Maybe talk to her son. You have to think that now we know she's a trained Jedi, she may have felt some responsibility in saving people. She could have saved the resistance. But nah, old heroes are for losers. The icon that girls could look up to is going to just sit there and wait for a man to do it. A trained Jedi is just sitting there doing nothing. So JJ decided to have Leia join Luke in the Jedi Losers Academy. And it makes all of her actions way worse. How ashamed do you think this old guy and this old guy would be about how the next generation turned out and how weak they are? Get off my lawn. 
I'll take that as a yes, because if I have to come back here, it's going to get fucking ugly. If JJ really wanted to fix Leia, he should have worried less about why she can fly, because nothing's going to fix that, and worried more about why she chooses a stranger over her own son every time. Now yeah, that's not going to help. That is also not going to help. If someone totals and writes off your car, you don't panic and paint over the damage with dog shit and declare it fixed. You move on and get a new car and hopefully it's better than the old one. Now with that pearl of wisdom in mind, what should have JJ done? Well for starters, Leia and Ray's relationship has always been hollow and forced. This could have been helped if JJ had shown Leia feeling closer to Ray because Ray wants to save her son Ben. Scenes of Leia confiding in Ray with what the real Ben was like would have also helped Kyle and Ray's relationship not seeming so teenage fantasy but in this film where they both apparently care for Ben there is no acknowledgement that the three of them have a shared connection as far as we know Leia doesn't even know Ray likes Ben so remember when you're blaming Ryan he just made Leia useless but JJ took her to a whole new level and made her a selfish loser like her brother Ray, Finn, Kylo, Leia, Poe, C-3PO, R2-D2, Hux and Chewbacca were all in a very similar position at the end of The Last Jedi as they were at the end of Force Awakens. For all those characters, hardly anything had changed from one film to the next. JJ even went into The Rise of Skywalker with the freedom to set up the relationships however he wanted because somehow at the end of two films, there weren't any clear relationships in place. I wasn't sure who wanted to fuck who. I'm still not. Ray! Ray, I never told you Ray! Huh? When you were sinking in the sand, you said, I never told you. I'll tell you later. You mean when Poe's not here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna die in sand burrows and we're all keeping secrets? There wasn't one story through that JJ was locked into. He had an open road to drive wherever he wanted and instead he crashes straight into a ditch and somehow took out George Lucas's story with him. Look, I hate what Ryan Johnson did with episode 8. As much as anyone, there's only one scene I can physically watch without expressing blood out of my eyeballs. But to blame Ryan Johnson for the absolute shite that JJ delivered is completely wrong. Don't let JJ get away with it again like he has so many times. What series has he actually finished properly? Ryan being the selfish little prick he is and not caring that he was doing the middle installment of a three-part story finished off everything he wanted to. He took the glory of killing cinema's greatest hero and left the franchise's future empty. Well, except for Broom Boy, of course. And JJ's answer to that was have our characters run around for over two and a half hours looking for stupid objects to get to a character that was killed 30 years ago so JJ's Ray could kill him instead of George's Anakin. None of which was set up in The Last Jedi. The worst part is, the rise of Skywalker is so bad, it's making me defend Ryan, slap the face Johnson. Now I'm not dreaming for one minute that any changes would fix this film. It's a pile of shit from start to finish. But it's JJ's pile of shit, not Ryan's. He's got his own. Every lazy, amateurish, OT and universe destroying decision we see in The Rise of Skywalker was introduced by the boardroom director. The stupid story, bringing this guy back, and this... Ray Skywalker was all JJ.